The Christian in complete armor by William Grinnell. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. In supplication for all saints. Chapter 19. In praying for others, we should pray principally for the saints. In praying for others, we are, as in an especial manner, to remember the saints. The apostle hints that by making them as the chief rank of men for whom we are to pray, and it suits well with God. Galatians 6.10 As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now I take prayer to be one of the most eminent ways of doing them good. What greater kindness can a man do for his sick friend than go to the physician for him? By other acts of charity, we give a little out of our own purse, but by praying for the poor saints, we open God's treasure for them. If one should meet a beggar and throw him a few pence, but another tells him, I have no money of my own to give, yet I will go to court and open your necessity condition to the king. It were easy to tell which of these does the poor man the greatest kindness. A poor saint may thus do more for another, though he hath neither silver nor gold to give, than he who hath the largest purse of his own. The conduct of Arana is observable. Second Samuel 24, verse 22, where we have his bountiful offer to King David. Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Here be oxen for burnt sacrifice. This was much, and showed his heart to be noble and large, as it follows in verse 23. All these things did Arona as a king give unto the king. Yet one thing he did, which amounted to more than all this, and that was his hearty prayer to God for David's acceptancy. And Arona said unto the king, The Lord thy God accept thee. He might have done all the other for fear, for a subject sometimes takes to his prince, because he knows he may take, though he gives it not. But by his praying for him, he discovered his hearty affection to him. Section 1. There are several weighty reasons for this duty. First, from God. They are the special object of his love. His love is set upon them. His thoughts and providence are at work continually for them. Others partake of the divine bounty, but they may thank the saints for it. When once God hath got his whole family of saints to himself in heaven, it will be quickly seen what God will do with the rest of the world. God dispenses the same providence to them both, but not with the same affection, nor the same end. He is the Savior of all, and but especially of those that believe. He saves the saints with saving purposes. The wicked he saves temporarily to destroy them eternally. He saves them from a present sickness or danger, that they may ripen for hell, as we save our young wood for a greater growth, and then cut it down for the fire. Now, what shall be done for those to whom God declares so much love? We cannot do less than pray for them. By this we comply with God's command and show our conduct in his choice. God hath made them the proper heirs of all his promises. Now promises are the ground of prayer. We are to pray for others, through the wicked, not knowing that God may have a secret purpose of doing them good. But where there is grace, God breaks open his decree. The fountain of his electing grace, which ran hither underground, now burst forth, so that you may with confidence pray for such a one. When Paul begs prayers to encourage his friend at, friends at the work for him, he assures them of his sincerity. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience, in all things willing to live honestly. Hebrews 13.18 As if he had said, you pray for one that God will not chide you for mentioning. They are the only generation that honor God in the world. Indeed, God honors himself upon others in their present lusts and future damnation. He makes their wrath praise him here, and his wrath poured on them shall praise him hereafter. 
but no thanks to them, for they do their utmost to lay the honor of God in the dirt. But the saints are a people who are not merely passive, but active in the praising of God. It is their mother language to bless the name of God. Whatever is their work, this is their end and aim. Whether they eat or drink, they do all to the glory of God. Now, upon this account, we are to pray for saints above others. The first thing our Savior teaches us to pray for is that the name of God be hallowed, in order to which he directs us to the very thing next words to pray for his saints, as those who alone can hallow it. Thy kingdom come. Section 2. Secondly, from Satan. His great spite is against the saints. God owns them, therefore he hates them. Where God is on one side, you may be sure to find the devil on the other. Indeed, they are the only company that stand in his way. As for the wicked, he considers himself to be advanced when they are exalted in the world. The father is honored when the child is preferred, but the saint's rising portends his fall. This makes him bend all his force by temptation or persecution to procure their ruin. These are the stars he would stamp under his feet. The first murder in the world was of a saint, and Cain will kill Abel to the end of the world. Therefore they need our prayers most. Thirdly, from the saints prayed for. First, they exceedingly desire prayers. The wicked may do this also, but it is by fits, in a pang of fear or fright. Pharaoh sends in all haste for Moses, when the plagues of God are in his house and fields. The carnal Jews begged Samuel to pray for them, that they die not. But it was when terrified with dreadful thunder. First Samuel 12:19. Yea, Simon Magus himself, smitten with horror at Peter's words, begs his prayers that none of those things which he had spoken might come upon him. But at another time these wretches cared neither for the saints nor for their prayers. Pharaoh, who desired Moses at one time to pray for him, at another time drives him out of his presence with a charge never, never to come to him more. But the saints are ambitious of the prayers of their brethren, and that the meanest among them neither. Indeed, as any one is more eminent in grace, so he is more greedy of his brethren's help. Paul himself, Romans 15.30, is not ashamed to beg this born of the meanest saint. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me, in your prayers to God for me. Did you ever hear a beggar at your door plead more passionately for the Lord Jesus' sake and for the Spirit's sake? If ever you felt any warmth in your heart from the blood of Christ or love of the Spirit comforting you, wrestle with me till we together have got to victory. Secondly, as the saints are covenants of prayer, so they t- take comfort beforehand from the expectation of what they shall receive by them. I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers. Philippians 1.19 I trust that through your prayers I shall be given to you. Philippians 2.28 Where first observe Paul's modesty. He sinks and drowns in his own prayers and expresses his faith on theirs. Secondly, his confidency. He doubts not but that they will pray. Neither does he question the happy return of their prayers into his bosom, as he had said, If he be faithful, he will pray for me, so that we break our trust and disappoint our brethren if we forget them. Thirdly, saints are the honestest debt we can deal with, then will pay you in your own coin. He that shows any kindness to a saint is sure to have God for his paymaster, for it is their way to turn over their debts to God and engage him to discharge their score to man. Onephesus had been a kind friend to Paul, and what does Paul for him? To prayer he goes and desires God to pay his debts. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onephesus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my shame. Section 3. Fourthly, from the saints' prayer, praying, there is no duty God commands, but he pays the Christian well for the performance. There is enough in this duty that may 
make it lovely and desirable in our eye. The best of saints have counted it a great privilege to be admitted into this nobler order. Paul thanks God that without ceasing he had Timothy in remembrance day and night in his prayer. But wherein lies this mercy to have a heart to pray for our brethren? First, it is a singular mercy to be instrumental to the grace or comfort of any saint, much more for the glorifying of God. This is a gracious heart prizeth highly, though it costs him dear to promote it. Now, in praying but for one single saint, thou dost both, Second Corinthians one eleven. He also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Paul begging prayers enforces his request with a double argument. First, for the prevalency of joint prayers. When twenty pull at a rope, the strength of every one is influential to the drawing of it. So in prayer, where many concur, all help. God looks at every one's faith and feverancy exerted in the duty and directs the answer to come. Secondly, from the harmonious of joint praises, the fuller the concerts of praises, the sweeter the music in God's ear. Joint prayers produce social praises. He that concurs to a prayer and not in returning praise is like one that helps his friend into debt, but takes no care to help him out. Secondly, by praying for others, we increase our own joy. When Paul saw the prayers which he had sown for the Thessalonian saints come up in their faith and zeal, he is transported with joy, as an incomparable mercy bestowed upon himself. What thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? First Thessalonians 3, nine. He had watered them with his prayers. God gives him joy for their grace. His joy flourishes, and his heart is so ravaged that he knows not what thanks to God are enough for the mercy he receives through their hands. Truly the reason why we gain no more from the graces of our brethren is because we venture no more prayers upon them. Thirdly, this would be an undoubtable evidence to prove ourselves saints, could we but hardly pray for them that are such. Love to the brethren is often given as a character of a true saint. Now there is no act whereby we express our love to saints, which stands more clear from insincerity than this of praying for them. Will you say you love the saints because you frequent their company, show kindness to the persons, stand up in their defense against those who reproach them, or because you can suffer with them? All this is excellent, if sincere. Yet how easy is it for vainglory or some other carnal end to mingle with these? But if thou canst find thy heart in secret, where none of these temptations have such an advantage to corrupt thee, pray to God for them with a deep sense and feeling for your sins, wants, and sorrows. This will speak more for the sincerity of thy love than all the former without this. End of chapter 19, having been read by Peter John Parises.